video, I'm going to talk about Dee Dee Willingham's Episode 7 Homework Assignment. Yes, I did watch Episode 7, where she shared some fascinating books about abandoned places in America. Society for Idea Collectors is a project by Dee Dee Willingham on her channel for those of us YouTube artists who are following her. And it's all about collecting ideas and generating ideas and grabbing on to new things that we can do in our art projects. There's a link to her channel and the Society for Idea Collectors playlist in the description box below. So episode seven, right at the very end, she gave a homework assignment. And the assignment was to do a mind map for each one of your tabs in your Society for Idea Collectors journal. This is my journal. It's just a composition book. And I have tabbed it. I have tabbed it on the margins of the page. And then I wrote the words in the center. And that works really well for me. And then I'm using colors to designate each tab. I have 15 tabs. So that meant... 15 mind maps. Now she did give a sample of the mind map. I would tell you to go watch her video and you'll want to skip to the end where she uses the tab of color and she chose yellow and then she went through each one of the questions who, what, when, where, why, and how. And she wants us to use her method of questioning to do the mind naps. And this is how I approached it. I listed each one of my tabs and then I listed a topic or something within that tab that I wanted to mind map. And then I drew little squares and as I completed each mind map, I checked it off. When I did the mind maps, I did them within each tab. And I'm going to go over some of these but before I do that Dee Dee right at the very end said she wants to know what we got out of this what was our eureka moment so I did a little page of notes to myself of what I got out of it the one I found was there were instances when I was mind mapping that I had to stop my mind map and go do that idea. It was very doable at the time, but I just had to go do it. I guess you could say that was my eureka moment. I had to get it done while it was fresh in my mind. Then I went back and completed my mind map. Then there were instances where I had what I called these light bulb moments. These are things I thought, these were ideas. I thought, man, this would be cool to do, but it wasn't something that I would stop right at the moment and do it. And I'm going to tell you a couple of those. Then there were some tabs where it was very hard for me to mind map notes. <laughs> How do you mind map a notes tab? The only thing I had under my notes tab at the moment was my to-do list. And i that's what I did my mind map on was my to-do list. And I will show you that, but I, I struggled a bit with it. Another thing was reference. But I will say with the reference one, once I got mind mapping it, once I picked the subject for the reference... Then I had a lot of fun with it, and I'll show you that. I will say with 15 mind maps, I had to persist in doing them. And I will say they are very basic mind maps. There's nothing sophisticated about them at all. There's nothing in my idea journal that is sophisticated. It is very much 
scratchy notes. Things that I want to remember, and I'm just getting them down there as fast as my pen can write. <laughs> Sometimes I have trouble reading them. So I'm going to go through these. I'm going to start from the bottom, from the back of my journal, because that's how I started mind mapping. Maybe because this one was relatively easy for me. Let me zoom in just a little bit more so you can see this a little better. I started out mind mapping just on a sheet of paper, and then I wanted to use this pen where it was soaking through to the other side, so I decided that I would tear the papers in half and this, then attach them within each tab. And so that's how I approached it. I did use colors, and I have a little scheme of colors. The pinks are for the questions. The blue is either the activity or the topic. I kind of use the blue and the yellow interchangeably here. I use yellow if I have an idea, and I use a little light bulb for it. And then I put homework assignment here. I covered up part of it, but so that I know this was part of the episode seven homework assignment. I did, I, on most of them, I marked it there, and then I dated it 914, because that's when I started it. This tab is a section for activities other than my art activities, such as shopping and going to the library, garage sales, reading books, anything else that's not related to art. The activity I chose was, I've been collecting this, it's coming up next weekend, September 22nd, 23rd, 24th, is a junk jaunt. It's a 300-mile garage sale where you can go to different towns, garage sales in different towns in north-central Nebraska. Now, I live way down in here. This is about an hour and a half drive for me. And there's a town here where I was reading the paper. They say, stop off on your way to the junk jaunt. So I've decided that I'm going to limit my budget. When I spend that much money, I'm coming home. I might spend that much money right there. <laughs> so I may not do the entire 300 miles. I haven't decided whether I'm going to take it this way or this way. It's going to be an eeny, meeny, miny, mode decision for me. But my ideas were, well, let me show you. Uh, who, of course, is me, and I'm going to go garage sailing one day that weekend. I'm not sure which day. Uh, what is the 300-mile junk jaunt? Uh, when? I dated it, and then I'm saving this little brochure. Where? North Central Nebraska. Why? And I'm just saying, search for surprises, uh, things that I can use in my art. Even though this is not a specific art activity, usually when I go to garage sales, I'm looking for things that I can use in art projects. I'm not looking for antiques or or clothes or or anything of that nature. I just want things that I can use with my art. But my bright idea, and this really is my eureka moment right here. What did I get out of it? What I'm going to do, now don't, don't tell the people along this route what I'm planning. I'm going to, usually at garage sales, they have these free boxes. You know, take it. Get it rid of it. We don't want it anymore. It's yours if you just pick it up and move it. <laughs> and I'm going to raid the free boxes that I see. I don't know how many I see. I may not see any. But I'm going to see what I can find for free. And I'm going to put them all in a separate box. And then when I get home, I'm going to come home and see what I can create with things that I just picked up for free. Now, that's not the only thing that I'm going to do, but I thought that would be a fun thing to do. And then my other 
idea, which was not so much of a eureka moment, but it was something that I thought would be fun to do, because I have not, even though I'm native to Nebraska, I do not travel much in these towns. And as I go here, however far I go, I'm going to keep my eyes open for interesting places to go urban sketch. Because this is not too far from me where I can't drive a couple hours and spend a day doing some urban sketching. So that's the other thing that I want to do other than just spending money at garage sales. I like to go to garage sales because I think they're fun. It's fun to see what people are selling and and just what's out there. It's amazing what you can get. I have another idea here. Oh, my other idea right down here was instead of just sticking to these towns, this route, maybe go outside of the area to some of the other towns to see if there are any associated garage sales. So instead of going to Mason City, maybe go up here to Arcadia or Comstock and see. I don't know these towns. There may not be anything. I might try to pick up a community newspaper and see if there are any listings for garage sales within this circuit here. So my other idea was not only to hit these specific towns, but maybe try some of the other areas within that. So that was my little mind map for that. So let's see. My next tab was more art activities. And this I am doing Jerry Bellini's design team this year. She has a group called Recycled Parts for Art. I am on her design team and I did a recent video of the package that she sent. And within that package was a Better Homes and Garden cookbook. I have to tell you, I'm mind mapping that cookbook, trying to get good ideas of how I can use it. Not just good ideas, because you can go on Pinterest, you can go on Google, and you can go on YouTube and search for ways that people have altered books. And the most obvious one is an altered art journal. But I'm trying to reach for something different, and I don't know what it is. So I have mind mapped some things in here, but I also put needs to be developed on there. This is a very basic elementary mind map. Look, I didn't even get the color yellow on it. There are all basic elementary mind maps. Here's the notes one. And I have to tell you, notes is another tab that I struggled with. Because the only thing I really have in my notes is my to-do list. And I'm going, well, all right, I'm just going to mind map. Why do I want to do a to-do list? Who is me? Why? It's a place to keep track of the things that I'm doing. Did I reach my goals? Did I accomplish them? When did I accomplish them? What do I have left to do? Um, kind of drop some words, achieve, um, date it. Where am I going to put my to-do list in my Society for Idea Collectors Journal? And then I put check often in here. I, I want to keep track of my to-dos. I just don't want to list them and never check it. So this is something I think could be developed further, but I made the attempt to mind map it. And I think the attempt, the getting started, is the first step. Then your mind subconsciously gels on these things. And I may come up with a brainstorm three days from now that I'm just completely missing today. And then I'll get my, my post-it note and put it down here. <laughs> YouTube is it something that I definitely want to develop for my channel. And you will be seeing that 
in short order. My next tab was spiritual. And here again, I did do my mind map. I'm going to show it to you, but I'm not going to go into it because it's very personal in nature. But I did go through the who, what, when, where, why, and hows. Research. The research tab was kind of interesting to me. I researched a Posca pen. I have never used Posca pens before this summer. Peg Robinson gifted me with a Posca pen, and I've heard all about them from my artsy friends, and I want to know more about them. So I researched them, and I made all my notes around here. I'm not going to read everything to you because that's not the point. The point is to show you that I'm mind mapping it. But I wanted to t tell you the question that I wound up with, and that is why can I not find Posca pens retail like at Walmart or Walgreens? I know you can go online and get them. I know that they can be ordered at various places on the internet. But why can't I run to my local Walmart store or my local Staples? Maybe they do have them at Staples. I don't know. But they are generally not available retail. And I'm wondering why. Uniball, Uniball is very much available. So, and Uniballs are associated with the same Mitsubishi Pencil Company, Uniball, Uni site. I went out there and read their website. But that was my question. And maybe maybe that's not a valid question. Maybe they are available retail at a store that I'm not aware of. My next tab was random. And this is where I've been keeping track of my YouTube contests, what I gave away, who won them, did I send it, and when. And here's my mind map for it. And I picked a random project that I may or may not do, but I picked collaborative art piece. And I mean a collaborative art piece in the sense that I'm going out and choosing art elements and objects from different sources. But I've been fascinated this year particularly with that word collaborative. It amazes me how out of copyright book or magazine from the 1800s has something that works perfectly with a drawing of a face that I did from a photo on the Wiki Commons. Or I find a, a piece on the street that's just trash. Maybe it's an old candy wrapper or something like that, and I put it down on a mixed media piece, and voila, it works. So collaborative mixed media. So I was mind mapping that. And here again, I have a lot of words and thoughts and everything that I'm not going to go into it. I'm just kind of giving you an overview of my mind map. Reference, and it's the one that I struggled with the most until I got started doing it. And when I got started doing it, I had so much fun. Because I was sitting there going, how am I going to mind map a reference tab? Because usually reference is just a list of sources or websites or something like that. But I picked Tony Buzan, B-U-Z-A-N, to mind map him. And why did I choose him? I'm not sure I'm pronouncing his name correctly. But he is the originator of mind mapping. It amazes me that this person's still alive today. This isn't something that he invented in the last century. <laughs> and it's really interesting to go out to his website and 
to read his thoughts. And right now I'm listening to a TED talk, a TED talk that he gave on the TED Talks YouTube channel. And it's just fascinating. And it's fascinating to hear him talk about the brain and knowledge and how we associate things and how we learn. So I think I had the most fun with this. So I was making notes on the back. Quotes. Learning how to learn is life's most important skill. That's one of his quotes from, he's written a book, he has mind mapping software. He's got a hashtag, mind map, hashtag mind map. <laughs> so it's, I joined, he's got a Twitter account. I'm following him on Twitter now. Questions tab is another thing. When I looked at my questions section, I said to myself, it's pretty sparse. <laughs> There's hardly anything in there. So my mind map was, why aren't I asking more questions? What? Do I think I know it all? <laughs> Am I just too accepting of things that I'm, that I'm not questioning things? Or am I just too lazy to question things? Why aren't I sitting there in my daily life and mentally asking questions? So here is my idea kind of my it's not an eureka moment but this is something i might try and i might journal it question my day from the moment i get up to when i go to bed to question everything that i do to try to to question each task you know like if i go for a drive in my car uh, not only where am i going but how does the motor in my car work <laughs> Where does gas come from? Uh, what does an alternator do? These type of things that, in this case, I think I'm just too accepting. If my car runs, I'm fine with it. If it doesn't run, I have a problem. So I think what I'm learning about myself in this mind map is that I need to question more. Why am I not questioning enough? And it was interesting because one of the articles that I was reading about mind mapping, and it could have been under my homework tab, was we teach children to question. I mean, they go to school and they question everything, but the older we get, the more, I won't say complacent, but the more accepting we become of things. Like, that's the way it is. I can't change it, so... <laughs> don't rock the boat don't question it <laughs> so it's it's a interesting it's an interesting topic when you stop to think about it my next tab was projects and for my projects I chose something that I want to do it's something that I've been dwelling on in the last several months I'm not ready to do it, and I probably won't get to it until 2018, but I want to do a painty paper art journal, and I want to start with the base papers here from artists, YouTube artists, friends that I have, and so far I've collected painty papers from Shannon Green, from Cindy Signs Utter, from Gina Ahrens, and Lucia McGill, and there may be some others along the way before I actually get to this project. And then I'll probably do some of my own. So I've been mind mapping how I want to approach this. What do I want to do with this? Do I just want a, a journal to display all the painty papers that people create? Or do I want to take those painty papers and use them as the base for art that I create? So, or do I want to do a glue book? It, uh, so I've just been kind of turning over different ideas, reaching for different ways that I could do my Painty Papers art journal. This one will be developed a little bit further. Here again, this is a very, very basic mind map. I have to say, I was reading about Tony Buzan's basic rules 
for mind mapping, I wouldn't pass. <laughs> Mine are too sketchy. I, I, I figure if I can get bright ideas for my scribbles, let them be scribbles. If they don't start with a thick line and end with a thin line, and if I don't have words capitalized and underlined in neat order, so be it. But if I get a bright idea and it's workable for me, and if I, if I get there because I connected it with something that I created on my mind map, then my mind map is a success. For writing, I chose a word, and I chose a word that I did, I believe, in 2015 on my ARCAD words, but it, that word came to mind when I was thinking about words. I do not have a list of words. That's something that I need to start. It's the figure eight infinity, infinity symbol, to paraphrase it. And then... In another lesson, Dee Dee had talked about mind mapping words, and she said, go look at the history of words, the origin, the definition, find uh, antonyms and homonyms and synonyms. Well, synonym would be infinity. I don't think I found antonyms. Antonym is an opposite so what is the opposite of infinity? I suppose would be maybe mortality or uh, an era, E-R-A, some from one point of time to another point of time. I'm not sure how that would be represented in a mathematical equation, but I'm sure there's a word for it. I found it very interesting, though, because when I started researching the origin of it was, of course, Latin. And I was sitting there thinking, why, why do we have so many words in our English language that are derived from Latin words? And so, of course, I had to Google that, and I got off into reading all about English and Latin and derivatives and that. So it was, it was fun. So my next tab was mind mapping and this is another one where I'm very interested in it so of course I have lots of notes on it and Dee Dee has said several times that there's many many different ways to mind map the questions who what where when why how are the the approach that she takes and that she wants us to take on our mind maps but my question was well, if there are many different ways to mind map, what are they? So I started researching different ways to mind map. And then from that, I got into, well, this is a society of idea collectors. What other ways besides mind mapping can we collect ideas? So instead of Googling mind mapping, I Googled collecting or gathering ideas or developing ideas. And let me tell you, if you do that, you are going to get lost on the internet because there's just there's just a tremendous amount of information, very interesting articles about generating ideas. And I wrote, well, I wrote down the rules of mind mapping by Tony Buzan. And these are just studies these aren't anything that I really do think that if I was doing this for a specific project, I would probably have a huge mind map, maybe go into it in more detail. But when you do 15 of them, believe me, you want something very basic and they'll be very sketchy. At least mine were. But some other things that I copied down uh, were some other websites was uh, read more books. Surf the web, keep a regular journal, uh, meditate, clear your mind. You think mind mapping, oh, I've got all this information. What am I going to do with it? I'm going to categorize it and associate it and link it. And, you know, your mind is going, blah, blah, blah. stop. Clear your mind, <laughs> if at all possible. Meditate on something. Just close your eyes for a few moments and Try to think of nothing, and that 
sort of gives you clean slate. And what I like to say, especially with this cookbook idea, I'm going to let it gel. I'm just going to let it gel. I'm not going to try so hard to mind map it or get an idea that I'm blocking all the ideas. So that's what I think about when I read the word meditate. Engage in observation sessions. And I think this would be very appropriate for artists. When we're creating our art, are we watching what's happening on our on our page? Well, most of us are, but sometimes we let the art create itself. And then after it's all done, we go look and say, hey, that's cool. Look what happened. Well, that's observation. But what if you were observing what was happening while it was happening and go, wow, look what's happening. And the one thing that I can think of is when I spritz the water-soluble ink pens and I watch that burst of ink, you know, mind map that. How cool. When you watch that happening, you're observing it. And then also I put under there uh, critique. Not just critique other people, but critique your own art. What was it about that piece of art that you created that you didn't like? Because if you can identify things that don't appeal to you about your art, then you know what you need to work on. Maybe it's perspective. Maybe it's a nose or the eyes. Or maybe you're working on, on rendering hands. So I think observation. And of course, along with that is going to galleries and and observing and appreciating other people's art. I talked about mind mapping and ways to mind map lists. List. List. I have it right here. I had a eureka moment with my lists because I don't do a lot of lists. I did list I started a list of photos that I liked in the child craft encyclopedias. I also started a list of things, commonplace objects, that I want to draw for giveaways in, the, in my live sessions when I have them for, to promote the recycled parts for art. But my Eureka moment was why haven't I listed in here the contents of Design Package? I did a video and I showed each one, but I really didn't make a list, so I stopped my mind map. <laughs> this was an instance where I stopped it and I said, I've got to go do this right now before I got to write it down before I don't do it. I made a list of everything that was in the design team package. But what I found interesting while I was doing this, not only was I listing it and documenting it, for maybe for future reference, what I found was while I was writing those down, ideas were coming to me of how I was going to use them. Except for the cookbook. <laughs> I'm still I'm still mind mapping the cookbook. So I that was a eureka moment for me. Then for homework, what I did the mind map on was my actual society for idea collectors journal. Now this is the first journal that I've done where I've attempted to mind map and collect ideas and write down thoughts and tab it and at least get some sort of a orderly fashion to my thoughts. But as I'm doing it, and as this is my first attempt, as I'm actually using it, I'm seeing things in here that need to be reorged. So I'm mind mapping how to reorganize my Society for Idea Collectors notebook. Now, I probably won't do that until I've completely used this to the point to where I'm ready for a new one. I'm not at that point yet. 
but I started doing some things just like putting my mind maps like this in the tabs. I really like the idea of doing that. Here I made a little pocket to keep a coupon, some business cards. Another thing that I did was I put rubber bands here at the front. This is a great big light bulb. <laughs> I don't know if I have that in the back here. Yes, I do. I have this big light bulb that I fussy cut from some place. America's Ingenuity Awards from the Smithsonian. Seriously amazing. I was going to actually glue it in here. And I thought, no, I'm just going to trace around it because I might want it for my next Society for Idea Collectors Art Journal. So what I want to do over here, you can see I have some other little notes of things that I'm taking. What I want to do over here is borrow from the Delusions Art Journal and put a manila envelope back here to keep my extra things. Right now, I'm just holding them in with this rubber band. But the rubber band really is here for if I'm working on something. And I'm at, just say I'm working on this mind map. And say I'm sitting out on the front porch and the wind is blowing. <laughs> Which happens a lot. Well, then I can just take these cheap rubber bands and put them right here, and that will hold my pages down so that I can actually work in my book. And then I just usually keep my ink pen, my cheap Dollar Tree ink pen, right out here. Let me zoom out a little. And I'll keep information like brochures of things that I'm interested in in the back, which will eventually go in my manila envelope. And anything that I get inspiration from, I'm, if I tear it off or something, just like this light bulb, I'll just tuck it in there. The one thing that I haven't done yet, I did buy them, I have them, but I haven't started using the post-it notes yet. I don't know if it's that I just, when I get an idea, I tend to scribble it down rather than put it on a post-it note and slap it down. Uh, I just, I haven't gotten to that mode of using post-it notes, and I haven't got into the mode of using, like, paper clips to mark off certain sections. I usually find myself going like this through my book to find what I want, and that's okay with me. So, this is just to show you a little of what I've been doing in my Society for Idea Collectors. I'm following along with Dee Dee's videos. I look forward to each and every one of them. I find that it is a very, very interesting project. And I completed my homework assignment. And I did get some eureka moments from, from doing them. So thank you for watching. And I will see you on the next page.